Hello everyone, this is Jess from 4th and Birch. Thank you so much for visiting my channel. Today we are going to make a coffee swirl tumbler. Who doesn't love coffee? And who doesn't love tumblers? So we're going to talk about the process of making this. So you can have your own to show off to everyone. I just love these tumblers. All right, let's get started. All right, everybody, so I'm starting with throwing in an additional clip. This was the beginning of a tutorial that I have done on a wood grain tumbler. So uh, you might hear me, hear me refer to wood grain colors, but I also do uh, bring up some, some important parts about coffee tumblers as well. But it's a good little information piece about all of the different brown colored alcohol inks. So it's really important for this as well. But if you do hear me refer to a uh, wood grain tumbler, just know that I will be doing the coffee tumbler in this video. Now the one thing that I recommend, there are so many different colors of brown out there. They're uh, getting very popular because of the wood grain tumblers, because of coffee swirl tumblers, different things like that. So there's a lot of browns out there, but my personal, personal recommendation is take all of them and put them on some sort of paper to see really what they look like. You can't necessarily tell just through the bottle what it's going to look like. And wood comes in so many different colors of brown, so really for a wood grain tumbler, it's probably fine no matter what color you use, um, although you might have a preference as to one versus another. <clears throat> but if you're using this for, for say, a a coffee swirl tumbler, then you want to be a little more careful with your colors. Some of the browns can come out to be very yellow, kind of a like a caramely, gingery, yellow color, especially when mixed with some white. Uh, and that's not usually what you want for coffee. And also some of them have, I'm not even sure if I have any here, but some of them almost have like a, a rosewood, so some redness to them. And again, probably okay for wood, like more of a cherry or mahogany look, but for coffee, not so much. So unless you know what your go-to of the ones that you always use, I always recommend giving it a try. So this is, first of all, this is Espresso by Ranger. And that's a nice dark brown. And out into the edges, it stays nice and brown. So that's a good one. This is Havana Brown by Pinata. Haven't used these in a while, apparently. They're kind of stuck. So that one also, it's a little, it has a titch more red to it, but not in a bad way. It's, it's, it's a very nice wood color. Uh, this is called Latte from Ranger Tim Holtz. So that one's okay. It's a good wood color. I probably would not use this one for my coffee swirl because this one probably would have a tendency to turn a yellow, a color that your coffee just doesn't typically do. Next one I have is Caramel. That's actually a pretty nice color too. Next is Teak Wood. The Caramel was uh, Tim Holtz brand and so is this one. So that one, ooh, that one's nice and dark. Teak Wood is a nice dark brown. And then Ginger, this is a pretty popular one for wood grain tumblers. This is also Tim Holtz. It's kind of a nice, kind of a lighter middle of the ground wood color. Uh, these I have not used yet. These are from Pixis Alcohol Inks. This one is called Latte. It's a very nice latte. Uh, this latte, the Tim Holtz one, it's a very nice color, 
again good for wood and whatnot but as far as like coffee not so much but this one actually looks a lot more uh, coffee like the next one I have for Pixis is walnut that's a nice dark brown color too next Pixis is caramel that's good too This one uh, exploded apparently a little bit. This one is called Coco. Oh, that one's a nice dark brown. Probably the darkest of all of these so far. And then Spice is the last brown one from Pixis. Going to do that one. If I can get the cover off, maybe. Maybe not. There we go. I get worried that these kind of go flying when the when the cover comes off like this. This is spice. And that one's not too bad. That one's the lightest really of all of the the pixies. I need to make sure that all those caps are on what all the way before I continue. But so here's kind of your palette that you, have to, that you have to work with. There are again so many different colors out there. You can get some on Amazon, you can get some from uh, different craft sites. So this is what we have to offer and if the nice thing about this is if you can denote a little bit on here what these are. So if you start doing a tumbler say with I don't know this and you're like boy this just isn't doing it for me I think I need to lighten it up well then you know maybe you can come to one of the lighter ones and you know which ones they are right off the bat some people do wood grain tumblers with one color throughout and some people mix colors to give it a little more dimension it's whatever you prefer so all right let me clean all of this up and we will get started on it Hello everybody, this is Jess from 4th and Birch and today we are going to make a coffee swirl tumbler. One of my favorites to make because I love coffee, so why not? Uh, this is a cup I got from Michael's. I, whew, I believe it's either a 14 or 16 ounce to be honest, I'm sorry I don't remember, but it does have the handle on it and I have already filled in the bottom with epoxy and uh, so that well isn't as noticeable. I've done other videos on how I do that. Um, but anyway, so it gives it a much nicer finished look on the bottom versus that well and the sticker that you have in there and all that stuff. So, uh, and then I've also taken some spray paint. I'll show you what that one is. Use Iron Lac. This is an acrylic spray paint. The name of it is Aspen White and I got this at Hobby Lobby. This is um, because it's acrylic but it's actually near the the more expensive paints um, like the oil paints, um, the heavy body acrylics, things like that. It's not by, it's not in the same aisle that like this type of acrylic paint is usually in. So, all right, that is what is on here. And thankfully, lucky me, as we all know, I'm a really bad spray painter. <laughs> uh, this is one of those projects that does not have to be perfect at all. Um, so that's great news. Uh, We're gonna cover this with a whole lot of epoxy. We're gonna use an alcohol ink swirl technique and then swirl in just a little bit of pigmented white as well. But if any of the cup shows through underneath, it'll be a little bit of this white. However, it is not going to show through enough that you need a perfect. So if you have, uh, if you sprayed a little too thick here and it dripped a little bit, or I don't know if you can see here, there's a little splatter of paint. None of that is going to matter whatsoever. There's going to be a decent amount of epoxy on here. So again, great news. So I'm just going to mix up some epoxy. 
I am using Swift Poxy for this from Tumblr Poxy. It's just the fast setting brand that they have. I'm going to mix up 30 cc's and then I'm going to take out about five or so and set it aside. And I'm going to pigment it with, pigment it with <laughs> this fluid pigment. have like little fuzzies and dog hair all over. This I got at uh, Blick Art Supply, but you can also get this online. This is extremely potent. You do not need much. A little goes a long way. Uh, you could also pigment your white with just a white alcohol ink, such as Pinata Blanco Blanco. That works. You also could use um, one of the, the white pigments, um, such as like poxy waves or different things like that, that people oftentimes use to make waves. However, those typically have an additive in them that helps kind of disperse them into kind of that little lacing, um, cells is what they're called. Um, I'll try to throw in a, a photo of what, what that means. Uh, some people are fine with that on their coffee tumbler. I don't want that lacy look of the white quite as much on here because that's not necessarily what creamer does when you drop creamer into your coffee. It more kind of stays to itself and then just mixes with the browns, but it doesn't usually do that, that scattery, holy cell lacy look to it. But you could certainly use that for your white pigment if you want to. Oh, let me tell you about my browns actually before we do that, before I get my, because I'm using my fast set epoxy, it, um, we only have about a 20 minute work time. So let's go through all this first. So the browns that I'm going to use are from Pixis brand. I have walnut and cocoa. Oop, another Pixis latte. And then the other three I have here are Tim Holtz Ranger brand. I have ginger, espresso, and teakwood. I'm gonna be really careful with this ginger and see what it looks like. Um, I haven't done a coffee tumbler in a long time and I can't find my notes as to what colors I used last time. Um, sometimes the ginger or the latte or the caramel color of the Ranger brand, the Tim Holtz brand, um, kind of makes a bit of a, a yellowish brown. And then especially when you mix it with the white, it really kind of brings out that yellow. So I do want a lighter color to have more dimension and and more layers of these colors. However, um, I, I don't want it to be really yellow. That's not really a, a coffee color per se. So we're just going to be really careful when we do this and see what that looks like. And when we first start putting the drops on, if uh, if it's something that doesn't look like it's working we'll just stop putting the, the that color on it so I'm gonna go mix this up kind of looking here oh this is my white pigment I thought it was my white my white from here and I'm wondering what I'm getting all white from but actually it's this guy he's leaking a little bit so that's what this is from I thought geez this has been hours like why is this not dry but uh anyway all right I will be back shortly <laughs> when we're ready with our epoxy all right, so I'm gonna speed this up just a little bit, but I'm mixing up my Swift Poxy, which is from Tumblr Poxy. It is a fast setting epoxy. So we have about 20 minutes or so of work time. And for my swirls, I uh, that's actually my preference is to have a shorter working time. When you start adding heat and starting start making the swirls happen, uh, you get to a point where you're like, wow, that looks great, that's how I want it you want your epoxy to actually start setting soon after that so it stays looking that way. If you have an epoxy that takes much longer to cure or to start thickening, those swirls will keep on swirling and mixing and potentially blending for a lot longer than you probably want. All right, so I've mixed up, I think, 25 cc's total of the Swift epoxy, and now I'm partitioning off uh, about five cc's or so just to save for later for our coffee creamer. 
So I'm going to set that aside because it's much easier to remember now than to remember later that you need to save some. All right, so I put, turns out to be a little more than five. I have about seven cc's extra in here. I'm not going to mix the pigment in though until we're ready to go. Sometimes when you mix things into epoxy, um, it speeds the curing process and we're not going to do the white until the the end and I don't want that process that curing process sped up at all so we're going to get this dude spinning I'm going to put this on somewhat thick. Like I said, I probably had about 20 cc's left in here, which is a little thicker of a coat than I would typically put on for other random tumbler projects. However, we are going to be dripping alcohol inks on here, and we want them to be able to kind of move around, swim around a little bit, and flow and swirl with each other and all that kind of stuff. So that's why this isn't considered a flood coat that I would put on top of say a chunky glitter or some of my other swirl projects. But it's still a pretty decent layer. Alright, so I'm done with that one. I'm going to do just a quick torch to get some of my bubbles. But we'll be adding a decent amount of heat, adding a decent amount of heat later with our uh, with our heat gun, so I don't really need to do too much for the bubbles. All right, and I'm going to kind of shook these up a little before already, and I'm going to take the covers off of these. And this part does get a little messy. So you definitely want paper or something like this underneath. And you definitely want gloves on because you are going to be looking like coffee otherwise. All right, so we're just going to randomly start putting browns on our cup. So this one, I'm going to put this one aside. This ginger, we're going to wait till the end, maybe. Uh, the first one here that I used, that was the teakwood. This one is espresso. Make sure to get your bottom. Next, I'm going to, this is one of our darker ones. This is cocoa. Okay. 
Next one is Walnut. Next one is Latte. This one looks kind of watery. I'm actually not going to keep using this one. It looks like I'm going to get some fish eyes with it. I'm going to try a, a ginger, excuse me, on my bottom. See what I think of that color. That one's kind of fish eyeing also, so I'm going to leave that one alone. I'm going to go back to my, what was the first one that I used? Was it espresso maybe? Yeah, that one's a little lighter. That's kind of this, a bit of a lighter brown that you see in here. Kind of disperse that through. Some of the areas got kind of dark, which is, a, it was fine. It's totally fine. I'm gonna mostly cover the cup. There's that white underneath. So it's really not the end of the world if we don't get every little piece. We are going to be putting white on top of this. We would just prefer that our white swirls, but that is okay. So that's pretty much covered. It's kind of looking a little coffee like already. I'm going to set these aside. I have more if I need them. Try to get most of the, the wet stuff off of my hands here. And then I'm going to take my white pigment and mix it in again a little goes a long way so like one two three four oops actually and the one thing i did not shake let's see yeah that looks better usually this is much more paste like Yeah, a little more like that. All right, probably put much more than I needed in there, but I was a little worried about it coming out watery at the beginning. I just want it to be a nice, thick white color. You don't want it to look like watery milk. You want it to look pretty creamy because it is going to mix with these browns and you want it to be able to hold its color a bit that white color and then this epoxy typically goes a long way also gonna move this guy because he's all wet I'm going to add a little bit of heat to this. just to get it moving a bit on its own before I throw this white on and I typically drizzle my white with something like this because again a little goes a long way was a huge glob right there. I need to fix that in a minute here. Let's see what I can do with that glob. Oop, it's already running away here. You can drag this through if you need to. Get a 
little bit on my bottom. All right, we're gonna see what that looks like first. That might be enough. So I'm gonna take my heat gun again. And I don't wanna just to swirl this way. I want a little bit of this way too. So I'm gonna tilt my tumbler while I'm doing this. here and a little on the inside. All right, just give that a little heat too. Maybe a little more here. So this is pretty hot. It's continuing to swirl sideways and I want it to not be straight lines across. So a lot of epoxy is dripping off. I got it warmer than I wanted to. But we'll be okay. I'm going to take my cocoa. I have a lot of white right here. I'm just going to add that to spin a little bit. I also see a little fish eye right here. If you are going to get fish eyes with this technique, there's just no way around it. but it's really not that big of a deal.
And that is it. You do this until you like what it looks like. You put less if you want less, more if you want more. I tend to try to put a little more of the white on the top because I think when you're when you're putting creamer in your coffee, it starts here and it kind of works its way down. But uh, what, again, whatever you like that it looks like and you let it go. I personally like using the fast set epoxy like this um, because I don't have to babysit this as long. It's already kind of starting to set. Um, it's you know, just getting a little thicker. It's certainly if I added a lot of heat to this, it would flow around this thing like nobody's business. But um, but if this were a regular epoxy, that took more hours to to cure. I would have to sit here and kind of watch this whole thing and make sure that it didn't start spinning or mixing more than I wanted it to. I do see I have one super tiny piece of glitter, which one for a whole cup that doesn't have glitter on it ain't so bad. There we go, get out of there. And that is it. Pretty easy. They all look different. No two look the same. You make it how you want it. You make it with the colors you want it, as much or as little white as you want. And then we let it spin and let it cure. I'll be back when it's dry. Hey everyone, welcome back. So here is our coffee swirl. fairly smooth. It definitely wouldn't be the last coat. There are still a few divots, like a, a few little super tiny fish eye kind of things. Very difficult to feel, but it could use just a, a light sanding. Oh, here's one. If you can see the light kind of shine off of that, that's where I dragged my little stick through it and it never totally filled in. Which is okay you can see a little bit of the white cup underneath it but little sanding you can put a, a decal on this if you want to or just like this whatever you prefer but i just love these and i love coffee so why wouldn't i love it So this is the best I have for now. It is nighttime, so I will take this back outside tomorrow for a better look in better lighting. So there you go, everyone. This is one of my favorite tumblers to make. Uh, you just don't need a ton of supplies. It's fairly easy, and again, no two look the same. So it's kind of always a bit of a surprise what the art is going to come out to look like. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you have fun with your coffee tumblers as well. And if you have any questions, pop them in the comments. Thanks, everybody.